Tucker Carlson's interview with Putin is out, and it was uninteresting. Carlson asked uninteresting questions, and Putin gave uninteresting answers. I think this was to be expected. There, there was a lot of media hype about it, and it actually seemed like many journalists expected them to say something interesting, but I think it was quite predictable that it would be like a big bowl of nothing. So instead of going into what Putin actually said, I thought I'd do a little meta and instead talk about what an interesting interview with Putin actually would look like. So let's talk about it. The reason why Tucker Carlson's interview with Putin was boring is that Putin just said the same things that he has said many times before. He just played the same old record and repeated the same explanations about the war in Ukraine. So I guess it was interesting in the sense that Putin had just repeated the same things that he has said before. And I think we should understand this as an expression of how he really thinks. This is actually how he sees the world. And it also points back to that old rule of thumb that dictators will very often be lying about how they want to do things. And Putin lies all the time about that. But they will very often also tell you the truth if you ask them what they would like to achieve or why that is a justified thing to do. So they will tell you the truth about what they want to achieve, but they will be lying about how they are going to do it. It's a rule of thumb, it doesn't always work, but in this case, I think it actually uh, is what we saw in Tucker Carlson's interview. Putin really believes this stuff that he's saying about why it was justified for Russia to invade Ukraine, and he wants us to understand it because he thinks we are wrong. So I guess that if you have the impression that there is some kind of secret explanation here, then maybe that part of the interview was interesting. But if you were looking for something new, then the, interesting, uh, the, the interview was not interesting because there was nothing new. And of course, in the run-up to the publication of this interview, there uh, have been many discussions about Tucker Carlson, who is this guy that is doing something that he calls journalism on X. Uh, what is his role in this? Uh, is he a Russian asset? Those things. And it has created a lot of debate that Tucker Carlson also, in his teaser for this interview, said that... Um, he's the only Western journalist who has been willing to make an interview with Putin during this conflict. And that's just a blatant lie. There are hundreds of Western journalists who would love the chance to get an interview with Putin. It's just that Carlson is the only one that Putin has wanted to talk with. And that's, of course, because they know in the Kremlin that Tucker Carlson is not going to ask critical questions. He's only going to ask questions that Putin will like. So Putin gets to say the things he wants. But then uh, that has that debate has continued into another debate about what are then actually the critical questions that a real journalist would have been asking. At least on Danish TV, this has been a pretty big topic, and journalists and commentators have been talking about what are the critical questions that they would have asked. And um, here's the thing. I think most of the questions that they have mentioned would have been absolutely fine for Putin, totally unproblematic. So that I, I think there is something interesting going on here because it shows that there is a kind of dissonance between uh, what they think is important for Russia in this war and what Putin actually is concerned about. So um, the questions they mentioned were things like, uh, how would Putin explain the many examples of war crimes? How does he explain, explain what happened in Bucha, for example? What about the abductions of Ukrainian children? What does he think about the arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court? What about all those uh, apartment buildings that are being hit by Russian missiles? Like These are the types of critical questions that the Danish journalists were discussing. Um, but it would have been absolutely no problem for Putin to answer these questions. He would have been lying. Um, but again, we're back to that rule of thumb where we're now in the realm where we're asking a dictator how he wants to achieve some things, and, and, and dictators lie about those things. But it would not have been problematic for Putin. He would have known exactly what to say to counter these questions. And it, it would have been some variation of just running through the whole textbook of misinformation. And you start with denial. It's not true. What is your proof of that? We never did those things, and you're just repeating Western misinformation. And 
uh, what aboutery? Why are you asking these questions when the Ukrainians are committing genocide in Donbass? And what about the Americans in Iraq? Like all these things, and and then uh, flooding. Also, you you start just to ramble off numbers and explanations and possibilities until everyone is super confused about what's up and down, and nobody knows what's going on. Like, right? but Putin would know how to respond to those kinds of questions, and. Even more importantly, it's not questions that could get him into any kind of trouble because it's not questions and answers that could actually change the minds of the viewers in either direction. Like those who are against Putin and believe that he's a war criminal, they would listen to that and they would say that here is a war criminal that is lying. And those who believe that Russia is not committing war crimes and that this is all just Western misinformation, they would continue to have that view. And, um, and also, these are not really questions that most Russians would care about because it's not really about them. And no matter how they look at the war, hearing Putin responding to those questions probably wouldn't change their mind. And I, I think it's interesting that when Western journalists are asked to come up with examples of critical questions that they would like to ask Putin, then many of them come up with things that Putin would be absolutely comfortable talking about. So. Um, I guess here, here's my little guide to what I think it would be interesting to ask Putin. What types of critical questions you can ask him if you want to get him out on thin ice. And what you need to do is you need to ask questions that somehow can be sensitive when it comes to regime security in Russia. And those are the kinds of questions you would be looking for. You would have, uh, you would have to ask critical questions that would also be thought-provoking for the average citizen in Russia, because then Putin has to be super careful about his answers, and he he couldn't just get away with saying some nonsense. So, for example, Tucker Carlson's opening question was something like, "Please tell me about the reasons for why you started the military operation against Ukraine." That's obviously a super weak question, and Putin just took the next 25 minutes uh, to ramble about history. I think a more interesting opening question would have been something like, it has now been about two years since you started the special military operations. How many Russian soldiers have died? Like casualty numbers are obviously something that Russian citizens are interested in and that Putin doesn't want to talk about. And then you could go on to asking about whether or not Putin is satisfied with the performance of the, the military, for example. Does he think the generals are doing a good job? I think. I think it would also be interesting to ask Putin about rotation of soldiers. Why is it that those soldiers who were mobilized in September of 2022 are still on the front line and there's no plan of replacing them? Like, would it not be fair to say that they had served their time and now it's time for someone else to take their place? Like, this is obviously a question where the answer would be interesting for the average Russian. And I also think it would be uh, interesting to ask Putin about the deep strikes, for example, that Ukraine is conducting into Russia with long-range drones. Like, wh what is his plan for providing safety for Russian citizens and businesses? And uh, then you could ask him about uh, the, the Wagner mutiny, for example. What, why on earth did he allow a group of mercenaries to become so powerful that they could start a march on Moscow? Like, these are the types of critical questions that it would, re it would be really interesting to ask Putin. And of course, that it's not surprising that Tucker Carlson did not ask these questions. But I, I do hope that if an actual journalist gets the chance to ask critical questions from Putin, then it's this type of questions that they would be asking, not, not questions about war crimes or civilian casualties in Ukraine, because that's all very safe for him. But if you want to challenge him, then, then you have to ask questions where the answer will be relevant also for a large part of the Russian population. Because then, then there is something at stake for him, and, and there would be a chance that we could get an interesting answer. OK, uh, enough for now. If you found the video helpful or informative, please give it a like. And also remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get notifications when I upload new videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next time.